Hi everyone, it's Leanna and I'm here with a new episode of Tales from Quarantine. Today we are going to be making some salad spinner art, which clearly uses a salad spinner. And for this you're going to need to take the bowl of the salad spinner out and line it with a plastic grocery bag or something else and that's just going to make cleanup a little easier. So you're going to want to get a grocery bag that's going to fit clearly around the bowl. Some people have larger salad spinners than others. If you have a really big one, you might want to use like a small trash bag. I'm securing my trash bag, my, not my trash bag, my grocery sack to the bottom of my salad spinner basket with a little bit of tape. And that just will keep things from slipping and sliding around. Because if you've ever really thought about how your salad spinner works, the spinning part takes place because of just friction, I guess, from the lid. So you want to make sure that the bag fits snugly against the lid and the basket so the basket can still spin once you get the, the whole salad spinner reassembled. So after you have your bag fitted inside the basket, you want to trim away the excess. And then again, you'll just want to firmly secure the bag to the basket with tape or whatever. You really don't have to do this step because again we're just going to use acrylic paint or tempera paints and those wash off easily as long as you don't let them dry. And even if you do let them dry they'll still wash off okay. But this just makes it I think clean up way easier and um, yeah. You don't have to use packing tape for this but I just use packing tape for everything. Because I can't be bothered with tape that doesn't stick to things. And there's just something really satisfying about the sound that packing tape makes when you rip it off that roll. Now once you have your bag securely fastened to the basket, you'll want to make sure that your salad spinner can still spin around appropriately. And if it doesn't, you can of course adjust things by adding more tape or making things more securely. Or if it just doesn't work at all, just remove the bag entirely and just know that you'll have just a little bit more cleanup once this is all said and done. Now, the next thing you're going to want to think about is securing your paper to the bottom of the bowl. I'm not sure how necessary this is. I did it, uh, but I didn't try it without the little piece of tape, but whatever. I am using mixed media paper for this project. You could probably use cardstock or any, any other paper. Um, I wouldn't use just flimsy copy paper because the water, the paint that you're using for this project, you do have a lot of water in it. It's very diluted. And if your paper is too floppy, one, I think it's just going to be too fragile to remove for the bowl, especially if you've taped it down um, because the paper is going to absorb a lot of that moisture. And, and two, it's just going to um, warp really easily once you get all that paint on. Anyway, trim the paper to fit inside the salad spinner and then start adding some very, very liquidy paint. I added a lot of water to these paints because you want it liquidy so it will spread out as you spin. Um, if you want to, you can explain to your kids about, you know, how a centrifuge works. Maybe talk about how astronauts train against G-forces and things like that. But really, it's just fun to spin this thing around and watch the paint fling about. And you can use as many colors as you want. As you can see, when you use the red and the yellow, it kind of makes this weird color. Um, I'm using just primary colors here, just for sake of demonstration. I would say it makes more sense to use fewer colors rather than more, because after a while the colors blend together and just start making this weird, muddled, grayish, purpley color, which is not as attractive as you would like it to be. But you can experiment to see what happens when you put a whole bunch of paint in the center, what happens when you put a whole bunch of paint scattered around, if you put the paint on one at a color at a time versus put the colors on all at once. Um, if you've ever done acrylic pouring, you, can, you know that sometimes the paint has different densities. 
So depending on how the paint layers, you might see a little bit of this bubbling effect, which it can be very pretty. And you can see here why the plastic bag is helpful because the excess paint gets flung off the edges of the paper onto the salad spinner. which could get very messy once you do a lot of these. Some of the salad spinners are the pump style. This is more of the crank style. For the smaller kids, the pump style would work a little bit better. Ooh, you can see this has those cells I was talking about, the little bubbly action from the different densities of the paint. I think that's very attractive. Anyway, some salad spinners use the pump action versus the crank action. Uh, and that would be easier for small children to use. This particular salad, salad spinner is a little difficult for small hands because it does take a little bit of torque to get going. So when I do this with my boys, I actually am the one who does the spinning, but they can apply the paint. And that doesn't seem to bother them at all. And again, you can do as much experimenting as you would like to with color, about what order you put the colors in, um, the amount of color. You can even um, give the paint a little bit of a head start with a toothpick or just a, the point of a, of a spoon or a paintbrush because if you give the paint sort of little tracks to follow, that's where the paint will start streaking out of rather than in one big blob. So you can control this a little bit and maybe even sort of design how the paint's gonna fling towards the edges. And you can also, once this paint is dry, cut it into shapes. So this could be Easter eggs, this could be flowers, this could be butterflies. The, the paper, once you're done with this, you can use it for lots of different things other than just, you know, pretty pictures on paper. So when you're done, it's actually very easy to clean up as long as you don't let the paint dry. This is a water soluble paint. So just rinse off any of the excess paint while it's still wet. And you can see here what happens when the colors all kind of smudge together. And it creates this really unattractive brown. If that were that was on the paper, that wouldn't be very pretty. But in the paint, in the salad spinner basket, it's fine. Um, rinse off the excess and then wash according to the manufacturer's directions. Most salad spinners you can pop into the, the dishwasher um, or you just wash by hand because this is, you didn't do anything greasy, you didn't do anything that's not food safe. These are all non-toxic uh, kid-friendly paints. And now it's still perfectly useful as a salad spinner. So yay for everyone, throw away the plastic bag that you used because that's not good for anything anymore. And that is using a salad spinner to create salad spinner art. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Episode? Vlog? YouTube video? I don't know what to call this. I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me.